Why do you think so many women fall for men who appear to be amazing matches? They feel seen, heard, even emotionally connected, but then end up getting deeply disappointed and heartbroken. I contend that in many cases, they fall for traits that appear attractive and magnetic, but end up being big, hidden red flags. So in today's video, I'm going to demystify seven of these situations so you can be prepared and can meet your ideal guy without wasting any time. There is one reason why confusing attractive traits that are really secretly hidden red flags is so challenging. And the reason for that is emotional intensity. When you are someone who has a big heart and you're searching for that joy of life and you're searching for a human connection that transcends space and time and you've seen this growing up in movies and you've read books about this and now with social media you can open it up and you can see couples who seemingly have a really powerful relationship traveling the world, celebrating anniversaries, fundraising together, maybe doing volunteering work. When you see all of that, there's a feeling of something missing inside that may not be based in truth, but the appearance of truth. When you connect with a man who has certain qualities that feel very emotionally intense, your nervous system is going to latch onto them without really asking the question, is this healthy or is this not healthy? Now, the thing that's going to be necessary for you to start looking at this with a different vision is something that I call compassionate action taking. Compassionate because instead of thinking there's something wrong with you, you acknowledge there are skills that you're learning that once you learn the skills, you can make better decisions. If you have a map of how to get to a location, you can get to that destination in a fraction of the time than you would if you're left to your own devices without a clear map of where to go. This is the reason why mirages in the desert are so compelling because you've been thirsty for three days and the sun is shining in your face face and you see something that appears to be an oasis and pool of water, but it's really just the sun reflecting on the sand. I want to give you seven situations right now that will prevent you from seeing those mirages and falling for them. The first attractive, and I say attractive with quotes, trait that women get confused by and choose the wrong men because of is what I call high price without depth. So here's what that looks like. Someone who doesn't know you, who connects with you emotionally, who has that charming vibe and shares with you things that he couldn't know about yourself, but you might know to be true about yourself. Maybe your intelligence, maybe your looks, maybe the way you make him feel, maybe how special, unique, and different you are. There's nothing wrong with somebody saying these things to you. It's just when the guy doesn't know you and he says them, they fall a little empty. And if you really feel like this is the type of guy who has the values, virtues, physical looks, the whole thing, the whole package that you've been looking for, you're far more likely to believe them without asking yourself the question, why is he saying this? Does he really mean it? How does he know this is true? And it's not just a soul to soul connection. He may just be saying something that he knows because he's practiced this, gets you to lower your guard, open your heart. And then when you recognize that you're in trouble, it's a little too late. The second attractive trait women fall for is intense attraction disproportionate to the level of connection. So what I mean by that is when the guy connects with you, it's one of those things, we had the first date and it was seven hours long. Okay, well, that could be good. It could be really bad. And then he called me the next day and we're hanging out all the time. This is almost like your life changes overnight and this man becomes front and center and he's doing all the right things really quickly. He's getting to know you quickly in a way that's not real, but feels real. He's asking you out multiple times a week. He's calling you and messaging you. And when he's doing that, he's not being aggressive. He's not being mean. He's telling you the things you want to hear. He's sharing things about you, as I shared earlier, that feel really good to your heart. But just the pacing of the whole thing is fast, really fast. The third trait that's really tricky that women fall for, that feels attractive, but maybe a really big hidden red flag is high assertiveness. Now, High assertiveness is one of those traits that we in society consider a trait of masculinity. Not that women don't have that. Women can also be assertive. But I think it would be fair to say that if you have a choice between a man who is indecisive, wishy-washy, doesn't know what he wants, what he's about, he can't make a move 
versus a guy who knows where he stands, he knows what he wants, he's clear about it, he's confident. Most women would choose the confident guy. Here's the problem. Sometimes the confidence is an overconfidence that's hiding deep insecurity. So how do you know? Well, when the guy is connecting, being strong, assertive, but he's not really taking the time to see how that lands in you, when he's acting as if you will agree with him and it feels compelling. And if you haven't had guys show up this way, then you might fall for, wow, what an assertive guy, what a cool, but he's not really looking for your heart. He's not really interested, but at the beginning, it feels really exciting. That can be incredibly challenging because there's going to be lots of guys who are of the alpha type who are going to do their way or the highway. And if that feels exciting at the beginning, but then turns into only if you do it his way, only if you do as he says, he's going to be happy. And if you don't do that, then he acts passive aggressive or he becomes distant or avoidant or he psychologically punishes you in some way, then that becomes really, really challenging. The fourth red flag that might seem really really exciting at the beginning is a very quick introduction to his inner circle. I mean, especially if there's kids in the mix. He's introducing it to his children and it's been like a couple of weeks or a month or two months. If he's sharing with you that he was talking with his mom yesterday, he just met you, by the way. And he's saying, I found this amazing woman and all this praise about the conversation with her or somebody else in his family, or maybe he connects you with his friends. There's nothing wrong with him connecting with his friends, but when it's that early and you don't even know him and here you are getting to know his entire circle and he presents you almost as a girlfriend and it's almost like a given that you guys are an item, that's the type of situation that might get you in trouble in the future because it means that this guy, instead of really getting a chance to know you, see you, pace himself gradually into that, is saying the immersive, high-intensity training that might not really give you chance to decide what's really happening now. I'm going to share three more important red flags that you might be missing. But before I do that, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet that you're not fully aware or not aware at all of the real root cause while you're still single. So what I've done after working with women for 13 years, helping them to enter really healthy and sustainable relationships without wasting time is I put together a quiz with those learnings that you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link on the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this, answer a few simple questions, and within a minute, you'll have two things. The answer to the elusive question, why you're still single, and a custom report based on your specific blind spots that's going to share what's the number one thing, number one action you can take starting today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fifth attractive trait that's actually a red flag is strong protective vibes. Now, here is the thing. After having thousands of conversations one-on-one -on -one with women who are seeking love, I'm not going to say everyone, but for many of them, to have a guy who has the capacity to be protective when need be, who's a guy who, if challenge arose, he could be strong in his own emotional and physical stance to protect you. That's a guy who wants to make sure that your life is better as a result of him. That type of vibe feels kind of enticing and exciting, especially if you've connected with guys who don't have it. Now, sometimes this protective vibe is control. Sometimes this protective vibe that seems so exciting at the beginning, there's hidden control manipulation in the mix. So if you don't get a chance to A, gauge what's going on, B, really decipher how much is this him wanting me to be better versus how much is he trying to get me to do things in his schedule, in his way, tracking my moves in a way that feels unhealthy. That's not protective that's controlling. I understand that it may not feel black and white, but I'm telling you right now that strong protective vibes at the beginning is not a healthy situation. That protection should grow in direct proportion to the level of intimacy and the level of connection you have, and it should not cross the line of control ever. The last quality that women fall for again and again, especially if you connect with guys who seem lost on earth, don't have a sense of purpose, is a guy who's highly ambitious. Highly ambitious could be a great quality. Highly ambitious at the expense of life is not a great quality. It's something that might make you suffer. So how do you draw the line? Well, a guy who's ambitious, who wants a great life, but is wanting to be in a relationship with you and his ambitions don't allow him to spend time with you, to remember certain things, to show up, to call, to message, to text because he's so ambitious. If he's working 90 hours a week and he wants to develop an amazing relationship, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to happen. Sorry, I don't care how gifted you are in multitasking. It will not happen. So high ambitious needs to be balanced with highly connected to inner self, highly connected to people around him, or it will be a very painful situation on the line. What now? If I were to say one thing that can help you to really check in with yourself and not fall for this is 
slow it down. Slow it down more than you usually do. Slow down the pace of initial dating. Slow down the pace of physical connection. Definitely slow down the pace of sexual connection. Slow down the pace of introducing yourself to his friend group. I'm not saying six months have gone by, I haven't met a single friend, that's not good. But at the beginning, if things start moving too quickly, even though they feel exciting, please, with kindness, slow it down, or you might fall for someone when you recognize that you fell for him, it's too late because your heart is really attached. Hope this is helpful, useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel. This is how I grow and can reach more women if you click like and subscribe. If you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, then make sure to watch the next video right here.